Hey, and welcome back for another ISO Bytes video series. In this video series, we'll talk about ISO 42001 AI management system. I'll cover all of the clauses four through 10, as well as all of the Annex A controls and give you everything you need to get your organization certified. We'll start off this ISO Bytes video series by talking about clauses four through 10. These represent the non-negotiable requirements you'll need to adhere to to get certified against ISO 42001. Clause four talks about who cares about your AI management system, the internal and external stakeholders that are interested in the success of it. Why do they care? What are their motivations? What are their drivers? And ultimately, what are the scope and boundaries of that system? Clause five talks about who's responsible for setting the tone and dictating policy. So you'll find an explicit requirement here for writing an AI policy. That's typically going to be where you name who top management is. Clause six is a big one. Clause six is ultimately around the a risk assessment process, as well as the setting of objectives and planning to achieve them. So in clause six, you're gonna to wanna to identify, assess, and treat risk. You're used to this process if you've been certified against other standards, such as ISO 27001. There is an additional requirement though for an AI impact assessment. And I wanna pause on that one for a second because it's kind of new for those who may have been certified historically against other standards. So that requirement reads, the organization shall define a process for assessing the potential consequences for individuals or groups of individuals, or both, and societies that can result from the development, provision, or use of AI systems. So think about that for a second. What this requirement is asking you to do is ultimately zoom out and look outside of the consequences of your organization and focus solely on those data subjects and society as a whole. It's a really big ask. You're gonna to have to spend some time planning for this one. Clause seven talks about the resources, competence, awareness, communications, and documented information needed for the management system to properly function. Clause eight is ultimately just operationalizing clause six. Clause nine is the ultimate performance evaluation of the system. So that's gonna be done by both the operators of the system as well as an independent party. And of course you wanna address clause 9.3, which is that top management review. And then it closes out with clause 10, which ultimately focuses on continual improvement, both through strategic planning and through non-conformity management and correction. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you still have questions about 42001, please reach out to us at risk360.com to see if we can help. Also, make sure to check out the description for some important links to other materials that'll help you as you take your organization on this journey.